see, George has had to go to his mother's, so if you hadn't offered, there'd be nobody to fetch Peggy from the airport. But do you mind, Frank? No, not at all. Heathrow, here I come. Bye-bye, oh. darling. Bye, darling. <laughs> Don't rush. I may not have your finesse, but I do get there, eventually. <laughs> Did you phone about Peggy's play? She left Edinburgh on time. Can you use some Greek cheese? Cheese. For Peggy? My little sister's down to 13 stone now. Those tablets are a great help. Anyway, I crumble the trees into the dressing and she can have it or not. How did Frank's interview go? Well, he's playing a dark, saying he won't get it, you know, Frank, but I think he stands a very good chance. How excited. When does George get back from his mother's? <laughs> Your face was better than anything in Hitchcock. <laughs> you like my pièce de résistance? Oh, it's horrible! <laughs> Isn't it gruesome? <laughs> it's a giveaway for ten packets from my new product, Horror Crisps. <laughs> you want to try it on? Go away, George. Oh, that wasn't very clever. I might have killed you. No, no, I had my eye on the knife all the time. <laughs> it added piquancy to the joke. <laughs> oh, come on, Laura. Where's, Where's your, your sense, sense of, of humour? humour? <laughs> Your husband may be going to be marketing manager, dairy products, while I, talents unrecognised, remain a humble brand manager. But my horror crisps will sweep the children's market, terrorising all opposition. Is that it for today, George? Can I relax? You can relax, Laura. I can relax. What are you planning? Nothing. The emphasis was all in your suspicious mind. You promise not to do anything to Peggy. I wouldn't do anything nasty to Peggy. Uh, Peggy? <laughs> Get us a drink, funny man. <laughs> your pleasure, Mrs. Parker? Campari and soda. Just Campari and soda, George, please. Oh, I never tamper with anything as serious as drink, love. <laughs> Last of the summer, Uzo, darling. George. Uh, cigarette, darling. I don't want one, neither do you. Uh, just two puffs. Do my cough good. <laughs> I think. <laughs> 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 
for anything else. No, thank you. Sit down, relax. We <laughs> invite you here and you do all the work. Uh, not there. Why not? Uh, that's Piggy. Uh, Peggy's chair. The seating's all arranged. Oh, it's all right. I can get up when she comes. No! Oh! Oh! Lunch at the fun house. What's next on the menu? Now, look what you've oh, done. Look what I've done? You've no idea how long I spent trying to get the dowels just right. It was exactly designed for her weight so that she would go... <laughs> I'll never fix it in time. Good. Oh, Laura, don't be nasty. Me? You asked him not to play one of his asinine jokes on Peggy. You know how sensitive she is about her weight. I know, I know, but that's nothing. Nothing? <sighs> I give up, Julie. I really do. Where's your sense, sense of, of humour? humour? My sense of humour is perfectly all right. I just don't find this funny. I find it cruel and childish. Ooh. One of these days, one of your jokes is going to go wrong, George. Put the chair in the cellar, Georgie. Hmm? Get another one from the other room. Hello, 6205. Hello, darling. It's me. Darling. Are you ready to give the dinner party of the year? When? Well, Frank, don't tell me tonight. <laughs> you guessed. No, it's, uh, it's Jack Stein, Vice President of Europe, and his wife. They're staying on an extra day, and I wondered... What time? 8 for 8.30. Fine. OK. Wonderful. <laughs> I know. Bye-bye, must go, darling. Hmm. Chinese Laundley? Is Julie there? Laura, I told you never to phone me at all. Please, George, this is urgent. <laughs> <laughs> Laura! Jack Stein? God. Tonight? Mm, I got the lamp of watching. It's fresh. Look, do you know who you did them before? If you can find. Bye, darling. Have a nice day. Mm -hmm. If you can. If you can find some really nice avocados. New York, New York, here I come. Hey, Mum, where's my football book? Oh, where you left it? Under the bed. Hello, 6205. Mrs. Parker? Yes? I'm uh, Mr. Stan's London secretary. Mm? I'm terribly sorry, but he's been called to an emergency meeting in Brussels. Your husband's taking him to Heathrow. I am sorry it's such short notice, but... Oh, well, I'm sure it can't be helped. And thank you for phoning. And bye. My time now. Oh, 
Barbara Stein. Goodbye, Jack. Safe journey. Bye. Who are you phoning? Who do you think? George. Oh, Lord, don't. That was no joke. That was malicious. Stein's understood. Yes, they thought I was an idiot being taken in like that. Oh, come on. The takeaway wasn't bad. It was cold. They didn't eat any of it. I was so upset I didn't know what I was saying half the time. They must have thought I was a scatterbrained loony. Don't phone! He's already trying to get his own back with that stupid chair. He's jealous of you. He's trying to ruin your career. Don't phone! Oh, that's what he wants, Laura. Don't you see? He wants you to phone. He wants to hear you crying and upset. Why? Why? You know he'll only say, where's your sense of humour? Don't give him the satisfaction. If we don't react, it hasn't worked. Don't you see? Oh, we had a great time with Jack and Barbara. There's a funny thing, Laura had a fake phone call to say they weren't coming, but uh, she had the meat in the oven, so she thought, what the hell? Wasn't that fortunate. Hello, 6205. Oh, hello, Mrs. Parker. It's Carol. Mr. Parker asked me to tell you there'll be two people from Brussels coming to dinner tonight. Oh, news of my Chinese takeaways must be spreading fast. I beg your pardon? Um, is this a joke? Joke? Is he there? No, I'm sorry, Mrs. Parker. He's out of the office all day. He did try and ring you. Mm, I've been out all morning. I'm sorry, Carol. I'm just a bit paranoid at the moment or something. At what time are they coming? <laughs> oh, hello. Nice. Did someone tell you? Of course someone told me. Where are they? Are the people from Brussels. I had a phone call from Carol. Right. No. All right, Carol. No. Don't worry. Yes. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Someone left a note on her desk while she was out at lunch. I thought she'd spoken to you. No. What did you mean? What? You said, did someone tell me? Tell me what? I didn't get it. The job. I thought all this was to cheer me up. Oh, darling. No, no, no. I'm a bit disappointed, that's so. all. I'll get you a drink. Mm. That was George, hmm? that evening. You know what the Americans are like. Assess the home background, the wife. Do they match up to the corporate image? That was an interview. I failed because of him. You're exaggerating. Am I? It might have made a difference. It might have made the difference. Uh, now, you don't know that. Neither do you. 
Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> it's all right. I'm not going to phone him. Why don't you use it when I'm away? Oh, no. It's all right. If yours is finally packed in, why go all that way to the laundrette? Well... Look, here are the keys. There's an ulterior motive. Go on. Keep an eye on George. Oh, just see that he's eating properly, that there's something in the fridge and nothing in the cigarette box, hmm? That he's all right. Julie, he's not a child. Look, he just doesn't look after himself when I'm not here, and I shall worry. Please, please, Laura. This may come as something of a shock to you, Julie, but George and I don't exactly get on. Oh, he thinks the world of you. Does he? Oh, I know what you think about his jokes, and sometimes he does go a bit far, but you like him, don't you? I mean, nobody could dislike George. I think you really believe that. Well, of course I believe it. Julie, I love you dearly, but I'd really rather go to the laundrette. nearly forgot. The old teddy bear. Beth and I used to quarrel over him when we were kids. <laughs> I thought I'd take him to Edinburgh for her new baby. George, it's been wonky for ages. No. Yeah. Oh. There. Give me a screwdriver. Oh. Um. Must do? Hmm. He should have fixed it. Oh, he's always so busy. Hmm. I think the threads are gone. No, it's all right. All right. I'll pop in while you're away. Oh, you are nice. So we had a taste of conditions on the road a moment ago. Let's get the full details now from Mr. Robbins at each other. Thanks, Bob. We have problems in the Caledonian Road at the moment. Also, Poplar and London Bridge. And the Caledonian Road, if we're heading south, coming down towards King's oh. Cross. And, uh, Sorry. I thought you had gone. With my car outside. Laura, here's the face in the misty light. Thank you. They're for Julie. You can tell me the truth. You can put them in water. She might think they're from you. Your words are like a whip. Is there no hope, then? None whatsoever, I'm afraid, George. Then why'd you come here so early? For a woman with kids, this is early. You knew I was here. The other night you came in. I promised Julie I'd look after you. Oh, so you said. I reckon you must fancy me. That's the only conclusion I can possibly reach. Do you fancy me, Laura? It's not the word I would use, George. <coughs> You're supposed to tell me not to smoke or you report me to Julie. You can smoke yourself to death as far as I'm concerned. Ooh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look what I found. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Meeting Julie at the airport? No. How can I when she doesn't know what shuttle she's getting? It will be nice to see Peggy again. Peggy? Julie didn't tell me Piggy was oh. coming down. <laughs> surprise, was it? Julie was planning to surprise me, was she? Hello, Laura, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, fine, thanks. 
I'll just get him for you. Bob. Yeah. Hello, Bob. That's right, 200 cases. Yes, you were quite right to check. Yes, yes, OK. I'll see you Thursday, Bob. Bye. Expecting a call? No. I just thought Judy might phone us. Mm. Would you like anything with your cocoa? <laughs> How are you doing? Cold one today, yeah? It's Dolly Parton's birthday. Come on, Debbie. Wakey, wakey. The bark's running. I'm not watching it. 37. That's the rage they're talking about. Well, the travel news before yes, that, there are roadworks on the A23 Laura, Streatham High Road at the George. junction with Sunny Hill Road. Yes, I saw him yesterday. Also, beware, gas reports, Why? What's the matter? Which is westbound traffic on the A309 Kingston Bypass, just west of Hinchley Wood. On the eastbound side Why? What's, what's happened? Why? What's happened? Why? What's happened? Yes, yes, so I'm here. Uh, in case he's had another another heart attack. Another? Oh, God. Heart That's attack. why I wanted you to keep an eye on him. I swore I wouldn't tell anyone because he wants to keep him from the company. And that wasn't bronchitis when he was off all that time. Oh, I'm sorry. I know I'm being stupid, Laura. Look, I'll, I'll go over. Look, will, will you phone me straight away? Yes, I will. Don't you worry, love. Don't you worry. Frank. Frank! Frank! Go after breakfast. After 20 minutes, that's all. It's on the table! Heart attack. The company doctor would have picked that up. Maybe it was after he saw him. Maybe it's one of his little games. Yes, of course it is. I know, I know. I just promised I'd go over, that's all. Go on, then. Laura, I've got a nine o'clock appointment. Please, Frank, Sally will come across. She'll see to the kids. Oh, please. Oh, Fred is bloody hopeless. Go wrong. 